Welcome back. Well, today is Sunday. Sunday is Project Day. So I know you're expecting a lot of advancement on our current project. Well, I'm going to have to disappoint you. But it was a disappointment to me too. But nonetheless, even when things don't go the way you think they ought to go, the way you hope they will go, there's always something you can learn from that too. So, we have a project day nonetheless, just not exactly the information we had been hoping for. See you in a bit. project today is this. This is our flying saucer lamp. And today is the disassembly of our lamp video. So why don't we just start with that because we're going to do the easy part of that. We have three little nuts. They're very tiny and they're decorative. They look like little, you know what they look like? Those little nozzles that you are, nozzle caps that you put on the end of bicycle tires. That's really what they look like. Um, oh, and some people, by the way, do this for their regular car tires, get these little decorative nozzle caps. It's exactly what they look like, only teeny weeny. We've got three of them. Now, the top is two pieces. We've got this piece, and that's the very top. I'll show you what it looks like without that here. It's like part of our flying saucer is missing. And here is the there's the larger piece. Now, when you look at this, you can see we've got a wear mark across here. Most of that will come off, but not all of it, because I'm sure you can see, uh, and certainly I can feel, where the chrome edge here came in contact with this piece it actually scraped the paint. So we're not going to be able to get rid of all of that. And it won't be necessary because this is going back on. When we've got the piece apart like this, what we're going to do is clean this part. And this is our enamel. Um, it's off-white. I don't think it was ever white-white. I think it was always off-white. We're going to get that cleaned up, tape it off, and then we are going to go after the chrome. Steel wool. And this is, um, what size is this? Okay four zeros. Um, and I don't know what that is officially called. I know when I was a kid, the old guys used to call it four aught. So that's what I call it. But I'm afraid that might not be the actual official name for this. And I'm just giving you sort of, you know, the old guys around the workbench. Four aught steel wool. It is Unless you get into some very specialized steel wool, this is the finest grade of steel wool. They go from fine to coarse, and this is fine. And I am using fine because, first of all, it's chrome. And I don't want to damage it. I want to get the rust off. I want to clean it. And the same thing with this here. Um, our central bar. 
I, I want to clean it. I don't want to scratch the daylights out of it. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to do some scratching, even with very fine steel wool. I'm going to scratch. When I am through scratching and getting the rust off, I'm going to go over it with two different kinds of metal polish. The first one is Brasso. That is, uh, that's just standard. Anybody who's ever been in the service knows that's what they use to clean their belt buckles and, you know, whatever metal they have to clean when they tidy their uniforms. And uh, they've been using that for uh, generations. So it's sort of my go-to metal polish, available everywhere, cheap. And then there is another metal polish and cleaner that I'm going to use once I sort of do the, the base work with the Brasso. And that's called Simichrome, S-I-M-I-C-H-R-O-M-E. And it's specifically designed for chrome. And I'm probably going to be able to get a finer sheen using that. I am not doing this on camera. The reason why is this is nothing but grunt work. This is elbow grease and nothing else. And you don't need to spend an afternoon watching me polish chrome. Um, it's just, we all know what's involved in this. So that is going to be done off camera. So I'm going to set this aside and show you what. This is what I'm left with when I take that flying saucer hub off. These are the bars that hold the saucer section. I'm, I'm talking about it like it's a real spaceship. I know. It's lockdown has not been kind to me. So eventually I'll get back out in the world. I'll regain my sanity. Fingers crossed. Our saucer hub goes on these three bars. Now remember, this was the bulb that was in here. Oh, by the way, this socket, you see that it's white? The reason it's white is that's a porcelain socket. That's a nice little touch. And I'm going to save that if I can. So this is the bulb that was in there. The bulb is a little too long, a touch too long. Um, and as I mentioned, I actually plugged this into a lamp, turned it on, and whoa, I thought this is just, I'm, it was lighting up the next county. So this is a 150 watt bulb, really bright, much brighter than we are used to today. Today, we are used to lower wattage light bulbs. When I was a kid, reading lamps that were 150 watts were normal. You just um, There were three-way bulbs that were usually 50, 100, 150, and that was normal for us. And then we ended up having energy shortages and we got into more conservation-minded uh, mindsets. And we stopped just over-lighting everything. So nowadays, a 150-watt bulb is not something you expect to see just in somebody's house. And I was not expecting to see it just like naked right in front of my eyes. Whoa. Um, nowadays... Where we used to use a 100 watt bulb, we're using a 60. Where we used to use a 60, we're using a 40. We, as I said, we are we are more uh, conservation minded. Years ago, especially in the the incredible post war economic boom, 50s and 60s, go go Ray Ray, you know we are just you know greatest country on earth. We got everything. By the way, we do have everything. Oh, we are the greatest country on earth. I'm not disputing that, not at all. But we could have been a little more gracious about it. We didn't need to rub everybody's noses in it. 
we we didn't have to worry about these things. Uh, electricity was cheap and plentiful, and gas guzzling cars were the norm. Now, no, not so much. So that 150 watt bulb, it has to go for a couple of reasons. Uh, and of course, the first, as I said, was wasn't exactly a perfect fit to 150 watts and with nothing, with no shading on it. No. Um, you know, somebody will just walk into a room with that light on and they'll trip and fall and kill themselves. So I ordered this. Now, I ordered this online. And I know it's hard to see because the top half is painted silver. And it's reflecting everything. And you have to use bright lights when you're filming videos. So that doesn't help. But here, let me show you the box. Because there's a picture of the bulb on the box. There, as you can probably see, the top half is painted silver. And of course, it's called Chromio. How clever these marketing people are. Well, I am returning this in part because it's broken. I mean, you can see the filaments dangling around in here. It arrived broken. The bulb, including shipping, it shipped for free, was $4.13. And I probably spent two hours arguing with Home Depot on the phone about this. Um, and, oh, by the way, that is sort of the norm for customer service everywhere. People started sending their employees home uh, with the whole COVID-19 virus thing. Um, they, they were laying off, they were sending people home, and so telephone customer service is, well, it's very hard to come by these days. It's absolutely hard to come by uh, with HomeDepot.com. So, uh, they still haven't agreed to give me my money back for this bulb yet. Uh, and what's going to happen is, I think I'm going to put it in the box, uh, get my receipt, which is, um, this is interesting because, of course, it's an online purchase. And Home Depot didn't send me a receipt, but I have my receipt from PayPal. So, I'm going to print that out, go in with my box. Bulb, box, receipt. It's four dollars and thirteen cents. They're not going to make a federal case out of it. But before I pack this away, even if the bulb were working and it didn't have little loose filaments in there, no, nope, you can still see the top of of the screw portion here. It doesn't fit. And even if I put a socket extender, socket extender is, is something, it's another socket, a socket you screw into a socket. So I would screw it in just like this. It has a light bulb base, screw it in, and then there would be another socket above it, and it would extend obviously extend. No, that's not going to help because this is too fat. So I probably should have done this in person in the first place because hopefully it would have occurred to me that this was too big if I saw it in person instead of just a picture in a catalog. On the other hand, if I didn't bring my uh, my lamp with me probably wouldn't have known. So I'm going to take some measurements and get another bulb. In the meantime, I'm going to start cleaning this up. And here. And this is the base that I'm going to use if I decide to turn it into a table lamp. Um, I, I have these all, I just pulled this out of a box. I didn't have to go buy this. The reason for that is, as I'm sure you already know, 
uh, you give me an old Asian vase, I'm going to turn it into a lamp. Consequently, I need a whole bunch of these. And I tend to get them in bulk, which is to say when I buy uh, a lamp base like this, I usually try to buy them from private sellers. And for some very odd reason, when people sell these, they sell several of them. So I guess somebody inherits grandma's collection of vases, and there are a lot of these in the collection. No explanation for it. Uh, I, I, if I were to sell these, I would probably sell a lot of them. But that's because I have a lot of them. They're in a box and I pull them out when I need to turn them into lamps. It seems to me very, very unlikely. There are a great many people out there in society collecting Asian lampstands specifically for the purpose of turning vases into lamps. That's just way too specific, if you know what I mean. So for some reason that I cannot yet fathom, people selling these, and it's usually ordinary people, these are not Asian sellers, these are not uh, businesses, it, the, their eBay ID will be, you know, something like Joe, Sally, and the kids. You know, so you know it's it's a mom and pop outfit, and you you take a look at the other items they're selling, and they've got like four children's books and a used blender. You know, it, they're not professional sellers, and they will have uh, three, four, five of these in a little set, and I'll usually scoop them up. Um, because I will want one of the sizes they have. By the way, Bob, Sally, and the kids, these little sort of uh, non-professional sellers, I like dealing with them best because they measure carefully. And they'll give me the interior measurements. They'll give me the exterior measurements. A piece like this, I'll have six or seven different measurements. It's like, yeah, and the feet are a quarter of an inch up. So I love dealing with those people. Um, this already here, I'm just going to drill a hole through the middle. And as you can see, this is where it came off the lathe. It's got that little mark already there. Um, here. So just drill through which I'll have to do anyway, even if I want to use this for a vase, turning it into a lamp. Bang, I'm done. And here's, it's an absolutely perfect fit. And because this was originally secured to the ceiling, there are two screw holes here. So I can screw it to the base. And then if, a new owner somewhere down the line doesn't like the fact that it's a table lamp. You unscrew and just disconnect the wires and you can turn it into a ceiling lamp again. So the great thing about this particular lamp is I, I, I'm not damaging it in any way by turning it into a table lamp. My opinion, it's going to be a lot more versatile if I can turn it into a table lamp it's a very good size for an Art Modern desk lamp. I don't know. We'll see. I'm still not that far along in the process because I'm going to have to uh, continue my cleaning process and I must continue my bulb hunt. So, oh, by the way, when I go to Home Depot for my $4.13, um, I am going to bring my camera and you can go shopping with me and we'll just take a look at what we have there. All right. That's where we are with regard to our project. So, um, before we talk about tomorrow, just going to give you a quick heads up for tomorrow. Um, I thought I was going to be able to pull names from the video in early June for our mega giveaway. 
doesn't seem to be working, so I'm going to redo the mega giveaway. Tomorrow, we're, we're just going to have yet another mega giveaway. Everything that didn't go out in the first batch, I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to show you pictures of it, and we're just going to run it again because I still have a lot of stuff, and I've been contacting winners, but I don't think they know it. The only way you know if I respond to your comments is if you have clicked on the notification icon. That's the bell. And even then, it doesn't always work. So we're just going to have to go through that again. More, more of these items to be given away. So... We just got to go back to the drawing board on this one. So that's, that's a good thing. All right. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Enjoy what's left of your weekend. I know for some reason this year, most people seem to have celebrated the 4th on Friday. And everybody's sort of going back to work tomorrow. After two months off, it's probably a good thing. All right. I will see you all tomorrow. We're going to finish up the mega giveaway, hopefully. Take care. I'll see you then.